Okay, thank you. Today is session nine, writing with detail. And our learning target today is I can write long with vivid, concrete details to help my readers fully understand what I'm trying to teach. And this is part of that um, learning target, writing 6.2, where we're writing informational texts about a topic, right? You guys are writing about your teen activism. And today we know we're successful with this learning target when you have revised at least one of your paragraphs and chapter um, in your in one of your chapters. Grabbing in. There's line pieces of paper up here too. Okay. And you're revising those chapters for details. So could someone raise their hand and remind me what did we learn yesterday? Does anybody remember what we learned yesterday? Thank you, Taylor. So the learning target was I can read with an eye toward collecting different kinds of information. Yeah, so we were talking about collecting different types of information. Now, today we're going to talk about how sometimes when we collect all that information, we kind of like stack it on top of each other and how we really need to space that out and kind of um, uh, flesh it out to make it more readable for our reader. So we've been talking about these ways to write informational text well. And if you could, right underneath your learning target, write them down. So you have writing informational text well, and then you can do it in this fun way, or you can do it at bullet points. It's really up to you. But the first one is build a logical structure to the progression. Sorry, guys, I'm going to zoom in. So the progression from one part to the next seems to make sense. And when I think of a structure, I just think of our boxes and bullet structure. So as you're writing that down, maybe you draw a little picture to the side of what it kind of reminds you of, so that you have an idea. You're going to write with a variety of specific and concrete information. And so I did a little wall as my little drawing to help remind me. The third step is you're going to glue bits of information and discuss, um, oh goodness, the lighting, you guys. Um, and discussion together with transitional words. So these are glue bottles, and I wrote, I know it's hard to see, but I wrote like transitional words. So I put another, for instance, this shows, you do according to, right? All those transitional phrases. And then what we're going to really be focusing on today is this fourth one. Elaborate, um, elaborate with details that bring the text to life. Examples, statistics, stories, facts, and your subject's own words. So if you're doing an article or a chapter on Malala using her own words. And so I, drew, I just wrote a little piece of paper and I starred a little spot. And we'll, we're kind of going to talk about why I put a star there in just a moment. So why don't you pause the video right now, Taylor, for a second. And as you guys are going to um, continue drawing or writing, not yet, Taylor. All right. So, if, like I said, this fourth point is what we're really going to be focusing on today. And as you are writing these four elements of informational writing down, I want you to kind of ask yourself this question. Have you done any of these bullet points in your own work? And if you have, maybe with your pencil, just put a little like star or smiley face next to the one that you have been doing. Because we should celebrate what we are doing correct, right? Right, I'm going to move on. If you need to look back at my notes later, you may. So today's goal, today I want to teach you that writing well often requires writing long. Okay, writing well often requires us to be writing long, ladies. We need to include anecdotes, stories, images, dialogue. These don't do well being kind of squished together, right? If I have a quote and then a story and then some dialogue, like, bleh, can get kind of compacted. So when you write long, you can write with details that bring the text to life, and those details are everything to your writing, okay? So, I have a question. 
Do you guys know what trash compactors are? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I've been there. I don't want your oh writing to be like a trash compactor. What do you think I, I mean when I say that? Yeah. Don't write on top of your only word. True. You don't. Ooh. I can kind of see where you're going, Tyler. Yeah. Don't compact it all into one short thing. I think he said it perfectly, right? Like, let's say I have a quote from Malala of her in the hospital, and then I talk about how she got in the hospital, and then I talked about the two guys, and then I put in, like, how she does education for girls, and then almost all of a sudden, my paragraph is, like, only this long, but I have, like, all my facts in it, right? Yeah, we need to kind of blend it out. So, I'm going to, um, oh, sorry. So we need to give our chapters room to breathe. Okay, we don't want to make it smell like a trash pump. Right? Don't want to make it smell like trash. Okay, so we need to make, uh, details make all the difference. And I want you guys to think back way back in September, okay, when we did our narrative writing and how I talked about how those details, how describing the scene really, really affects your story. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. So use those skills that you learned in narrative writing and implement them into your informational writing. Help people imagine what you are saying with details and help people really imagine the places, people, issues you are writing about and bring them to life. Okay? Avery, can I pick on you real quick? Yeah. I just want to mention that Avery, she wrote her own poem dealing with her subject. So I love that she's using some of those narrative writing skills in her informational um, website. Okay, yeah, and you can do that too. If you have a personal story about being bullied and you're doing bullying, that's an option, okay? So I wanna practice reading for details with the example that I've been writing. So let me pull that up here real quick. All right, you guys, so I'm not going to, is it playing? Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to read you the introduction because I read you that yesterday. Okay. And I know I ha did read you the first body paragraph yesterday, and the but I have not read to you the second body paragraph. And as we are, as I'm reading this, I want you to think about hmm. One, which paragraph, which body paragraph, the first one or the second one, should Mrs. Schnell add some more detail? And two. Where are some details that Mrs. Chanel added in one of the paragraphs? Okay, those are the two things we're looking for. Where I can add more detail, or which paragraph I should add more detail, and which paragraph has good detail, and where is that? Okay? So, I need you to listen as I read. The Animal House of Fort Collins provides volunteer opportunities for community members. One way community members can volunteer is by walking dogs. You can also play with them in the dog park or run with them. After a fun time, you can give the pup a treat for being a good boy. Another opportunity for the community to get involved is by serving community service. When you are serving community service through the animal house, community members clean out dog runs, dog kettles, and make yummy treats. A final way people can volunteer their time to the Animal House is by being a vet. The Animal House allows students going to the vet college at Colorado State University to practice spay and neutering dogs. They also give the necessary shots needed for their health and will chip the animal before handing them over to their forever home. If time is precious, the Animal House puts on fundraisers in which all um, proceeds go to helping keep their facility running. The Animal House makes sure that any dog that leaves their facility is in safe hands. Background checks are required for any volunteer employee and family, um, any volunteer employee and family who wishes to adopt a dog. In the background check, Animal House looks for a history of abusing animals. They also look at how many square feet your house and yard are to make sure that your living situation is best for the type of dog you are adopting. Uh, providing happy, uh, providing happy, safe homes for all dogs is the mission of Animal House Fort Collins. So, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think, and then raise your hand. 
where, which paragraph has the best details? Which paragraph needs more? Raise your hand when you have that idea. Looking for more hands. Which paragraph has great amount of details? Which paragraph needs more? Lucy, what are you thinking? Which one has the best um, details? Paragraph one. So the first paragraph. And which what detail do you think is a really good one? What informational detail is a pretty good one? Um, that, like, the, um, the fundraisers. Okay, the fact that they put on fundraisers, right? Okay, so I'm going to bold that because Lucy just told me that that's a good part. Any other good pieces of information in this paragraph or de or details? What do you think about it? I think that how they uh, do background checks and how... So I'm using some good details with the background checks, okay. Anything else? Any other good details, you guys? Maybe some from some hands that were raised but didn't speak. Jack? Um, I think that you had some good details in the first paragraph, like how you can volunteer and how you can help out. Okay. And then in the second one, I just I think that you need a little more detail on how, on what else they do in the background checks. Oh. Like, uh, like yeah. <laughs> uh, like you could give an example of like how big the house has to be for a certain dog. Okay. Or, and then like, so with the yard, like, yeah, yeah, heat yard. Okay. So you guys are getting it, right? Sadie, keep going. Um, so for like three, for the, um, Make sure that your living situation is best protected on your adopting. Maybe you give an example. Okay. So like right here, give an example. Okay. Anything else I could add? So you guys are getting it, right? So this first paragraph has tons of details. And I kind of throw in that little short story of like, you could give the pup a treat for being a good boy. Right? You can kind of almost hear like you talking to a dog, right? Versus this paragraph, it needs some work, right? I need to add in some more things. What do you notice like physically about the difference between this paragraph and this paragraph. Physically, what do you notice our characters? It's bigger. It's bigger. Meaning what? It has more details. It has more details and that I wrote long, right? Yeah. I wrote a lot longer. So today I'm gonna switch back here to our slideshow. Today your goal is to revise at least one of your chapters and one of your paragraphs in one of your chapters. Okay? You can add comments like I did as you read so that you know what to add. Make sure you include specific details with each story. After you are done revising, you may choose to work on your third chapter or you may choose to continue some research for some other chapters that you still need more research for. Any questions before I release you? No. No.